So, so listen, you, you mentioned before about read to your children. <laughs> yes. Now, you know, this, this, this rap music thing, that's what I call it, right? It's for uh, the children. That's not a problem. It's for the children. Okay. okay, yes, yes. Right? So, you know, it's, it's the messaging, the messaging is targeted to 13-year-olds, 12-year-olds, 11-year-olds, right? You, you're talking to the children, right? Uh-huh. There's, a, there's, a, there's a new, I guess we all call it style of hip-hop that the children are doing that don't sound like what we was doing. Uh-huh. Joe Buttons and Lil Yachty got into it, you know, say a little while ago. Um, you know, I'm not a little Yachty follower like that, but from what I heard, I kind of dig it in terms of for what it is. And it's not super negative. You know, it's not drugs. It's not, he's not going out there. He's just being clever and, and giving something that he's doing. This is it, right? So mm-hmm. how, how much of the generation gap is old, the, the older generation just having to accept what these new cats are doing and appreciating for what it is. For, for me personally, I don't have to appreciate shit that I don't want to appreciate, right? I also don't have to listen to it. And I also don't have to dislike it. The thing, I, the little piece that was sold to the world was with Joe Button asking him about the 360 deal. I dug that part because Joe Button was also trying to educate him, telling him that if you're going to get into something, at least know what you're getting into. I dig yeah. that because... Four years from now, well, next year when they use and abuse little Yachty and he's no longer relevant and he's crying somewhere talking about how somebody took all his money, you know, and, and he's homeless and all that shit because it's going to happen. Um, mm-hmm. Joe Button is trying to tell him, yo, little nigga, watch yourself. You know, the way it comes off, that's Joe Button. I can't tell him he's right or he's wrong for how he conveys his message. Neither can anybody else. How little Yachty receives it you know, because you still, you have some parents who are going to yell at you and bust your ass. And then you have some parents who's going to put you on timeout. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's just, you know, um, it, it, it's just a difference. But with little Yachty and them, that's just not for me. I don't give a fuck about that shit. I just don't care. I just don't listen to it. Listen, I'm big on names. If I don't like your rap name, I don't listen to you. I'm just that, <laughs> I'm just that much of an asshole. If I think your name is stupid, I'm not listening it's to that It's a rap. Yeah, like, There's you know no what I'm saying? This is what I'm saying. So, for me personally, you know, I don't, I don't feel like it's a, a disconnect because why are you trying to be connected to some shit that 13-year-olds are fucking with anyway, though? It's just not for me. You know, I, do, I believe in doing age-appropriate shit. You know what I'm saying? There is hip-hop. Uh, the thing about hip-hop is when the fucking cha-cha slide come on, Everybody's doing it. You know what I'm saying? It's certain thing that 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 uh that bonds everybody. You know, but I'm not trying to be with what the 13 year olds are doing. And that's the problem now. That's what kind of fucked hip hop up too, because I didn't like the, the music that my father was listening to. I didn't want to hear fucking Donna Summer. I didn't want to hear disco and shit like that. I thought that shit was horrible. Just like he didn't want to hear rap. That's what made us different. You know, and right. I feel like the minute the children and the parents started watching the same TV shows and watching, listening to the same music, music and, 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 and TV and wearing the same shit, that's a part of the culture. That makes you peers. So then there's no separation. So now right. that's when the young dudes can say, I don't have to respect you, nigga, because you my peer. You Look, you got on the same sneakers I got on. I know where you got your hat from. We got on the same fucking hat. I'm equivalent to you. When at one point, you know, your pops might have on a fucking belt that's $200. You couldn't get that belt. But now the, the swipers and the scammers got on belts that are $400. So we look on the fucking to, to TJ Maxx and trying to get a $12 belt. And they're going to get a fucking $400 belt. So it's like the roles have been reversed of how we look at each other because a lot of the grown ass men are acting like little boys. And a lot of little boys are acting like grown ass men. And it's more because the grown ass men are trying to be down. Let the young dudes do what they do. If you don't fuck with it, don't fuck with it. I'm listen, when they ready to receive the knowledge, 
You got to be ready to build for them. Yo, That's yo. It. Did, did you see the video of BD Man going in on Ninja Man for wearing, for, for wearing tight ass jeans? No, 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 no. Nah, I never saw that. Oh, man. Ninja Man got some tight ass, tight ass leggings. And BD Man is going in on them. Hard body. Y'all can could, y'all could Google that if you want to you want to see it on your yeah, own. Yeah, I mean, but but you know, to to really to really, you know, sum it up in that situation is that, yo, it's like us being mad because they redid He-Man. You understand what I'm saying? The He-Man show that I love, the Transformers show that I love, is not the Transformers that the kids got, right? The Tom right. and Jerry that I love is not the same Tom and Jerry that the kids are watching, you know? Right. But I'm not going to sit there and say, oh, this ain't the real Tom and Jerry. Fuck this Tom and Jerry. All I can do is show them the origin of Tom and Jerry. Exactly. Right. And if they want to know it, then they're going to know it. If they don't give a fuck, listen, when people don't care, they don't care. You cannot make they people don't care. care. Yeah. You know? And, sure and then, be, because now look, the Donna Summer that my father was listening to, the, the Manhattan transfer and, and the old days and the shit that my father was listening to, I hated that shit, but now I love it. Yeah. Because it comes a certain time where you start doing age appropriate shit, where you start appreciating. Exactly. Oh, I get it. Exactly. I remember my father used to have Jet Magazine, right? And mm-hmm. it was the Jet Centerfold of the week. And the chicks was in the bikini. And he used to be like, oh, you see that shit? And I'm like, what? She's fully, she has on a bikini. She has on a clothes. I thought the beauty of a woman's body was nakedness. I didn't know that the more clothes she had on and the more curvy and the more voluptuous she looked fully clothed was more sexier than right. being new. Right. Now, being the age that I am now, the more clothes you have on and the more curvy you are and the more voluptuous you are through your clothes is way better than being butt-ass naked. Again, but it took me some time to grow into shit to understand that. So... I just think a lot of times we don't give the youth a chance to grow. And hip hop culture and the corporations is not going to give them a chance to grow because they're going to have a new nigga next year. Exactly. That's the problem. It's about, that's, and it's all about that's that's the dollar. Problem. Yeah, that's yeah. the problem. Yeah. Before well, him, we had Soulja Boy, we had Chief Keith, we had different fads of young dudes that. Every two years, there's a new, there's a new Joker. Exactly. Every two James. years. Yeah. I remember when so, Cass was compl- complaining about snap music. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Every two years there's a new, there's a new, there's a new style, there's a new thing. Man, so and, you want to add something? Yeah, I mean, like I said, for me, it's not about hating, it's not about liking. It's just about being ambiguous to shit. It's okay to be ambiguous. It is okay. You don't have to comment on everything. You don't have to like everything. You don't have to hate everything. You don't have to care. Shit don't, that don't apply, let it fly. For example, with me, right? I'd rather show more love to things that I love than more hate than the things that I hate. Because sometimes by showing hate shit, you're also showing love. For example, everybody, mm-hmm. you know, consensus would say the greatest MCs of all time even though I don't agree with the list, but they'll say who? Biggie, Jay-Z, and Ox, right? They always going to say that, these new generation people. You know, some people have an argument, you know, but I disagree, whatever. So if they drop a new Jay-Z video tomorrow and they drop a new little Yachty video tomorrow, everybody will go to the Yachty video and say how much they hate it, but they won't go on the video to say how much they love what they so-called love. Yeah. So how are you showing more love to what you hate you understand what I'm saying? That no, makes no more sense. It does, doesn't exactly make any sense to me. There's so a, everybody... There's a, there's a paradigm that we're in where hate, negativity has been monetized. It sells. Exactly. Like sex exactly. sells. The whole negative movement has been selling for so long that it's kind of in our whole framework. Like if it ain't negative, we ain't even checking for it. It's but not that about is it's good though. or not. It's whether it's fucking negative. But I'm going to keep it real, though. That is an energy that I believe was founded off of the Tupac situation. It was an energy that was brought with the Tupac that was able to sell records. And a lot of people ran with the formulas, the 50 cents, the games, 
you know, people ran I, with the formula. I, I, need you, I need you to elaborate on that. Because I remember, you know, Brenda's got a baby. I mean, how, you know, Keep Your Head Up, uh, Dear Mama. He got a lot of inspirational songs, Tupac. He got a lot of inspirational songs, but people don't know about Now a Clown Around when to Hang Around with the Underground. They don't know that dude. They only know the death row dude. The dude who got shot up. The dude who was in jail for rape. The dude who got robbed. The dude who went through all these changes. They only know that rebel Tupac. They don't know the Tupac of love. They don't know to keep your head up Tupac. That, that person is not marketed and promoted because there is no money in positivity. They were, he was marketed and promoted. And then he went to a person like Suge Knight who was all for the, He was with the shits. You understand what I'm saying? Then you have Jimmy Iovine you know, it was just so many people who were in that circle that negativity. It, I mean, is it a coincidence that Jimmy Iovine was behind Tupac and 50 Cent? You understand what I'm saying? Like, nothing should be, hold on one second, it should be a coincidence to people. Well, you understand what I'm saying? Like, Pop. <laughs> he wanted to love exactly. like they love Pop. <laughs> he said that. So, so, so listen. So when um when when Tupac again not in his right mind creatively you know you could create how you create but there's a camera right here I think I'm looking like on some pardon me if I'm looking on some Stevie Wonder shit and shit but I don't, I realize the camera right, y'all looking yo, good man y'all you know, looking marvelous you, you at home right now so you do what you do at home I, you know whatever so part of the the marketing of Tupac was the negativity because it sold magazines, it sold records, it sold uh, commercial slots of the East Coast, West Coast thing. Because he's pl he said plenty of times, there is no East Coast, West Coast thing. I just got niggas that I don't like. But it still was sold on every publication as East Coast, West Coast. So East with Coast, that West energy, Coast. yeah, so the energy that he came with, they was able to monetize it. Not saying that he was on that shit, but he was able to be used the same way they use people to this day to where the negativity is able to be used to be monetized. Like I had people who had, like if somebody say something about me, right? And I didn't see it, right? Why are you at reply to me what somebody said about me? I don't give a fuck. Honestly, I just really, really don't care. If it didn't come across my desk, I don't care. If that nigga did not say it directly to me, because everybody knows how to get at me, if your nigga didn't at reply me, if they didn't uh, do thing, why are you doing the due diligence of telling me negativity? But if somebody say, yo, Doggy Diamonds is dope, I love his podcast, you don't at reply me that shit. You at right. reply me on negativity because you want to see the train wreck. You want me Ooh. being who I am, I'm going to reply. So now you sit, black, sit back and you get your show. But I refuse to be anybody's show. So I fell victim to certain shit. I fell victim to people popping shit and talking shit about me and me replying. And then I started saying to myself, well, you're a little bit too smart to be stupid. You know what I'm saying? So stupid people can't be smart, but smart people can be stupid. stupid. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I said, yeah, I said to myself, hold on, how are you getting caught up in shit that you know better than? With you, shit only gonna go one way. Somebody say something about you, you gonna punch them in their face. We're not gonna do no back and forth shit. Or we're gonna try to get on the phone and talk like men, which happens in most of the cases. But it's the egging on of the people that's making us look at each other and say, man, fuck Hakeem. Because every time Hakeem does a live stream, people are trolling you with my name, a la going back to the flex thing. So people don't know the Tupac of keep your head up when my homies called Brenda's got a baby. You know what I'm saying? Um, all the records that he did that was uplifting, informative, and was trying to create a narrative for people to have some type of esteem. All they know is the destroy Tupac. They don't know the build Tupac. They just know the destroy. They just know the energy of the gang banging, of the MOB, money over bitches. You know, um, fuck these bitches. You know, they, that's all they know. They just know and it fit right in what Snoop and them was already doing. It fit right in what Death Row already stood for. You know what I'm saying? So that that's that's the, the time we on. And that's why people, you know, unfortunately, some people love Tupac because he was a rebel. You know what I'm saying? 
and people love the, the, the rebel. People love the person that has absolutely no filter to a certain extent. That's why some people love me. But I'm not reckless. I don't just sit here and just say shit for trolling purposes. Everything yeah. that I say is carefully thought out. And, and sometimes I run it over people to make sure I'm not bugging the fuck out. Because I be wanting to know, yo, am I bugging the fuck out? Or did <laughs> a line just run in? You know what I'm saying? And yeah, you then, gotta but, sex with, you, yeah, with your but, real people. That's just gonna pull your coat. Exactly. The way the industry is set up is that, you know, you're not supposed to say certain shit. It's almost taboo to walk in a room and say, what the fuck is an elephant doing in here? And everybody's like, Ooh, what elephant? We don't see an elephant. We don't see no elephant. So now if you came in there and you, you made mention of the elephant, you can't come back in the room anymore now. Nah, you know, nah. That's, that's, word up. That's, what, yeah. that's what the corporations did to hip hop. It's like some don't ask, don't tell, secret shit. You know what I'm saying? So when anything unjust, anything that's fucked up, if you speak about it, they paint you as old, bitter, angry, ungrateful. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And that's, down, and that's, down, what, down. that's what they do to you. So the people who are speaking up, the people who are saying, hold up, this shit is fucked up. The drug culture is fucked up. The zombies, the kids being walkers, that shit is fucked up. They're looking at you like, oh, you just out of touch. You know what I'm wow. saying? Yeah, I got people yeah. mad at me because I don't smoke weed. Wow. People are mad at me because I don't smoke. And I'm like, yo, that's just something that I chose not to do. Like, I mean, what happened like, to having yeah, choices? Bro, like, you, like this, do you. As long as you're not hurting nobody, especially yourself, do you. Like, I don't have no pressure on nobody. You don't smoke weed, you don't smoke weed. You know, especially for you. If, you, if you're in your 40s and you ain't never smoked no weed, you ain't got no business smoking weed. This is the point I'm making. Like, I believe in doing age-appropriate shit. It's just certain things that I've never done, and I would be a cornball to try to do it now because, you know, certain things you're introduced to at a young age, and you can do it or you cannot do it. Now, if you start doing shit in old age, sometimes you're doing shit just to be down. I don't have nobody with that influence over me that I just want to be down with some shit, unless you're a fucking billionaire, and I want to be down with how to get money, you know, or you just have some type of knowledge and I want to obtain that. But other than that, recreational shit, I don't want to be down with nobody. Yeah. Go ahead. I got to put a, I got to, I got to put a disclaimer on that because the good green is good for medicinal purposes as well. So some yeah. of the people out there for that reason need to, you know what I mean? Get their, their meds and we don't want to turn people away from that. Which actually yeah, but that's but that's for people. Yeah, but that's for people who are, who have been diagnosed, and they're going to go do some shit for themselves, not doing it because this is what everybody else is doing, or you're a cornball if you do this, or you're not this if you don't do that. Go ahead. Yeah, no, that that's just as a segue to actually our next our next interview later. Well, how, how okay. we setting this up? This show up is we had you, you know, setting it up for us for the first hour. Okay. And we're going to play hip hop videos, weed videos for the next half hour. We're just going to run videos. And then we're going to bring, cool. second- bring our second guest in after that, who is Dr. Ulysses Jackson, who used to be a promotions director at Def Jam. He left the industry some years ago, went and got his, uh, his doctorate, and he now does work around op- um, opioids, dealing with people who are addicted to opioids. So that's the next conversation. So it's actually a perfect segue for that. I want to big you up for coming on, like, most definitely. No like, doubt. You know, you've been, you've been a, a, a great influence for me over the last couple of years. I've known you for, you know, damn near, what, 20 years now. 20 years, and, yeah. Um, uh-huh. so for the last couple of years, you've always opened your door for me, had me on your show, big me up, promote my, me and my brand. And I want to thank you for that, you know, salute you. Um, final words, and I want you to shout out all your platforms so people know how to stay up with you. Um, right now, the best place to catch me is Doggy Diamonds TV on YouTube, Doggy Diamonds TV. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you click the bell next to the subscribe button so as I upload a new video, you'll get the notification that I uploaded something new. Also, you can catch me. Um, on SoundCloud and iTunes, the name of the podcast is Doggy Diamonds No Filter, where I have various guests. 
I just started a new podcast called The Beef and Broccoli Show with my two co-hosts, Koku and Davida. I believe that you're not a boss unless you employ somebody or make them some make somebody else a boss. So I started a new show to give them their own platform um, and that, that I'm on as well. Uh, I also have a Patreon account because YouTube got funny with the ads and shit like that. And I put out a lot of content independently. So I have a Patreon account. The name of my Patreon account where you could do a donation is as little as a dollar a month. That's $12 a year, $2 a month. That's $24 a year. $3 is $36 for a year. It's a dollar per month. It's patreon.com slash doggy diamonds, no filter. And of course, on all social media, doggy diamonds, D-O-G-G-I-E, D-I-A-M-O-N-D-S. That's Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and Facebook. I want to thank y'all for having me on the podcast. I'm the first non-smoker probably on here. I'm probably going to be the last non-smoker. Y'all smoke it up for me. And I thank y'all for having me. Peace. Yes, sir. Appreciate Peace. you, man. Yep. I, Peace I'm out. I was just rocking out oh, in the bro. background, man. But I was definitely listening to all the knowledge and the insight, man. Thank you. I like y'all. Have a good show. I'm out of here. I gotta eat. I'm one you know second, I eat on second, the schedule. Hold on. Go hold ahead. on. Go ahead. Go left. Before we let him go, you got you got a question for him? Um, now y'all actually ran through the conversation I was thinking about. I was thinking about that whole pop. And, and flex situation, you know what I'm saying? I thought that was kind of reckless. And when also when y'all was talking about kind of like vultures in the culture and, and all this young thugging and type shit like that, it's cats like Leo Cohen ushering that shit in. You know what I'm saying? And he was he was supposed to be one of the people who was there from the essence. That's a vulture. Because, because again, it's about the almighty dollar. He doesn't care about... The culture, and I do want to say to people out there, the listeners, the word culture vulture is being used a lot and is being misused because culture vulture has nothing to do with the color of the person. The culture vulture is people who's vulturing off the culture because it started from uh, uh, the war correspondent named Del Jones. It was called Culture Bandit. And he was talking about how white people came into the game and stole it. And then people started remixing it and saying culture vulture. But a black person could be a culture vulture. Anybody, a culture vulture is anybody who comes within the culture of something, don't know shit about it for the purpose of money and misusing it for monetary gain without giving anything back to it, without giving education and without giving, uh, adding on to the game. They're just coming in for the money. That's what a culture vulture is. Because a vulture is somebody who just lives off the spoils of the kill and they have nothing to do with it. For example, if lions kill an elk, and, and the hyenas and the lion pick off the elk. And then you look, you might see the vulture come eating off the elk. If you didn't know any better, you would think the vulture killed the damn elk. Yeah. So the culture vulture is the same way in the culture of hip hop, the culture of everything. If you didn't know any better, you would think that they was the creators of a bunch of things, the way they're celebrated. So that's what makes people culture vultures. Mm, so absolutely. I just wanted to say that. And corporations you know can be vultures. Was it you earlier, Hop? You said... Uh... Co- when McDonald's starts saying woke, is all the vultures. you said when McDonald's starts oh, yeah. saying no, woke, I, it's time no, to stop no, music. Oh, oh man. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I woke up commercial this, they talk about being woke. I woke up this morning or uh, earlier, turn on the TV, there's a McDonald's commercial, some black family, the father goes get the daughter, and the, and the narration in the background goes something about when it's time to get woke or stay woke. I'm like, what the heck, woke? Why is McDonald's using woke? Like, that's a no all the way around. McDonald's can't use woke. I'm sorry, they can't have that. <laughs> like, no, but they can't. But- Yep. All right, y'all. So um, thank y'all for having me. I'm about to go eat my dinner and shit. And um, anytime y'all need me, you know I'm a phone call away. No doubt, brother. Salute. Appreciate you, man. All right, peace.